Philander with a break against Christo von Rensburg. Leads 3-1 in the fourth as he closes in on an advancing win that would take him to the final eight. Of course, this is the only Grand Slam championship that Philander has not won. And Tim Mayotte handing out some uh, lessons to Michael Chang on court 14. 6-3, six, 6-1. Six, Mayotte, who has always played brilliantly here at Wimbledon. Uh, almost a cinch to make uh, this round of 16 and it's been a semifinalist John McEnroe oh my five love down to John Fitzgerald on court one let's see what that's all about let's go to Charlie Jones and Stan Smith Dick here at court one uh, a major turnaround McEnroe came out leading four games to love in the first set and then he went right downhill double faults uh, he double faulted twice in the fifth game uh, he was lucky even to hold on to his serve. He uh, won the first set at 6-3, and since then, John Fitzgerald has dominated everything. And McEnroe, now with nine double faults thus far in the match, is serving at love 30. Well, John McEnroe has double faulted three out of the last four games that he served and lost all those games on game points. So it's really unusual for... John McEnroe on this grass. Love 40. Love 40. You see John hitting this off backhand. He plays it side and doubles to do side and he hits that backhand quite often. And McEnroe is serving a triple set point. And this would be the third time that he would be broken here in the second set. And he had a tirade in the eighth game of the first set and asked for a supervisor and delayed and got a warning, an unsportsmanlike conduct warning. And in reality, that was in the eighth game of the first set. And he took, uh, he played a mind game with John Fitzgerald and he won. He took him out, took him right out mentally of the first set. But uh, Fitzgerald has dominated the second set. 15-14. Fitzgerald really doesn't like the antics of John McEnroe. It's obvious he's played him before and been very vocal about the fact that John McEnroe does play mind games with his opponents. Interestingly enough, the supervisor that McEnroe asked for, two men came out after the end of the first set. They were talking about the 30-second rule that the server has. McEnroe wanted clarification on the rule. But what makes it more remarkable, the first four games, McEnroe with two service breaks up for Love first set, looked as if he was going to dust Fitzgerald off like Love one and two. He was playing so well, and then it's all gone away. And it started with a double faults in the fifth game of the first set. McEnroe's service motion has gotten much more deliberate over the last few months that I've watched him play, and his rhythm is still not there. 30-40, serving at love five in the second. Game and second, Game and second set to John Fitzgerald. Six games to love, three service breaks. And we are at one set of feet. One set of Third set. And so Fitzgerald will serve as we start the third set, just as he did when we started the second set, and he Five started this miraculous run. McEnroe won only eight points in the second set. 15 love. Since that lead that McEnroe had at four love in the first set, Fitzgerald has really outplayed John McEnroe. But I noticed back in the second game of the second set, John McEnroe went down fairly hard and he, he grabbed for his back just slightly, the right part of his back. 13 love. And since then, he's been walking slowly. He's been rubbing that back just a little bit and doing some stretching exercises, which is a sign of a back hurting him a little bit. Also, as he looks to his right, he's been bothered by some kind of a ticking sound on the right side that he's complained about. 
And also in the first set, he asked for the height of the net to be checked. 40 love. Meanwhile, John Fitzgerald with the ace. And that is his second of the match. And he is up 40 love. Both players have not been thrown in big serves. Only three aces of the match. Boy, what a difference from the very first couple games of this match. McEnroe looked like he was floating on air out there, hitting every ball for a winner. Set a piece, first game of the third set. And it is game wide. Show. And John Evil. Fitzgerald leads one game to love in the third, and we'll be back with more of the Wimbledon after these game, messages from your local station. One Checking so Seinfeld on laundry. Sure grabs the underwear. Come on. Set 4-1. Two games from advancing to the quarterfinals where he would meet the winner of the John McEnroe-John Fitzgerald match taking place adjacent to on court one. And uh, what is wrong with John McEnroe? How many times will you see that goose egg in a set score against this talented left-hander who's serving what? now a set apiece and on serve Charlie, in the third. And meanwhile, Michael third Chang... Set. Down two sets against hard-hitting Tim Mayotte. Mayotte loves the serve and volley game, and Chang has not been able to call upon uh, all that prowess and skill that has uh, manufactured great wins both in Paris and here at Wimbledon, coming from behind so often, and that's what he'll have to do again today. It's 2-1 on serve in the third set. Meanwhile, uh, while they're having a towel off out on 14, let's go back to court one and McEnroe Fitzgerald. And McEnroe serving now at 15 love. Second game of the third set, a set apiece. And Fitzgerald is up one game to love. Now we have, a nut, we have something else that is going on. 13 love. At the changeover, McEnroe has been, claiming, uh, you know, has been complaining about some ticking, a ticking sound that has been bothering him, which should now be to his left, like when the players come into court number one. During the changeover, two men came over, talked with the umpire, now are standing in the entrance way along with three English policemen. And as most of you, I'm sure, know by this time, is that on Saturday, McEnroe had uh, three death threats and also had an air, you know, aerosol spray after a doubles match in his face. And so this is what crosses a lot of people's mind at this time. As love. the match continues, and McEnroe is at 40 love. And there they are. Now, the, there is a large green box near that entrance, and that is a refrigerator because the tennis balls here are kept refrigerated from a compression standpoint. Sam. That's right. They're kept at the same temperature at all times, so when they bring out new balls, they're very consistent. But we don't know if it's the refrigerator or exactly what it is that's causing that ticking noise that's bothering John McEnroe. Game McEnroe. Game to McEnroe. And the games are one all in the third set. One game more. Well, these are very key games for John McEnroe. You see Quiet, I'm watching. Love 15. 
And a double fault for John Fitzgerald. Love 15. down as he makes the value of the 15 10. Old. Now we are live with our coverage and when you go live particularly outside of the United States that you have some technical problems and I'd like to inform uh, our control unit that I do not have any feedback or hear information from them. So when we make a switch here from to uh, another court then Stan Smith will, will be making the switch for us. <laughs> well John McEnroe goes down. He missed just that ball. It took a low bounce as it often does on grass. Back. We're at one all in the third and a set of piece. And it's lost. 30, 15. We have to give full marks to John Fitzgerald, who now lives in Newport Beach, California, for playing excellent tennis starting from the middle of the first set. Forty fifteen. Forty fifteen. And today, as you can see from the shadows, the prettiest day that we've had at Wimbledon this year. The weather prior to Wimbledon was outstanding. And the first week a little dicey, but now the weather has turned perfect again as John Fitzgerald holds her in the third. Fitzgerald leading back in row two games to one. Leading Christophanus Rensburg 4-1 in the fourth as he goes for the quarterfinals. We can tell you that all the women's Round of 16 matches are complete, except for the one that will follow this one on center court when uh, Steffi Graf, the number one seed, number one player in the world, will play the brilliant young 15-year-old Monica Sellis. Now you're looking at court 14, where Michael Chang is trying to rally against Big Tim Mayotte, the former Stanford All-America and NCAA singles champion. But he's down two sets, but the story of the moment is taking place at court one. John Fitzgerald going after John McEnroe. At and Dick McEnroe is fighting for his life and the cross court passing shot on the return and it is love 15 McEnroe McEnroe serving at one two and a set of peace and it's there it is a perfect return right in the corner love 13. McEnroe is questioning that call Talking to the chair umpire Rudy Berger of West Germany. And it was a perfect shot right on the corner stand. Absolutely. No doubt about it. John grasping for straws here a little bit. Fitzgerald, a strong, no nonsense Australian. Doesn't like the annex of John McEnroe. It's forced him to concentrate even harder. 30 old. Backhand 
cross court. And break point. The crucial 13, time 14. for McEnroe. He can't let another break slip out of his hands. The momentum has shifted tremendously. And great position on that backhand ball, or backhand passing shot. And John Fitzgerald, of course, from Australia, known as a doubles player, and that is a perfect double shot. But inside the singles court. McEnroe serving at 30-40. Plagued by double faults, nine in the first two sets. And three on break points. overhead particularly and the bulldog comes in on grass doesn't let the ball bounce as he's been taught in Australia and gets wrong footed by a tremendous forehand passing shot and we're deuce And this is really the first game in the last 10 that McEnroe has shown any signs of life. The adrenaline is going there. That last point might have been the point that's brought him to life. And he's got to be ready to play here. Fitzgerald is playing very solid tennis. See the mark right from here. Yeah, very bad call, and you're going to make another bad decision to me. You should say that. Now, in the first set, John Fitzgerald then started complaining about the antics of McEnroe and the delay that he caught was causing in the match. Oh. Another vintage McEnroe half volley, in one hand. He comes down, sticks his racket out in front of him, and massages it down the line. And we're at two all in the third set, one set apiece. The racket does the work. Fourth round match, the winner moving to the quarterfinal. Been lob. And it's wide. Love 13. Boy, that was a careless error by Fitzgerald. He has not made very many of those during this match. eager right now. Love 40. Back 
second row, triple break point. You can see it in his walk. He's walking quicker. He's uh, twitching and <laughs> as usual. And he's back in the match. Right. Next! First service. This is the first break point since the fourth game of the first set for John McEnroe. Fitzgerald is no rookie here at Wimbledon. He took out U.S.'s Brad Gilbert, the seed in his section, to get this far. Gilbert was the 11th seed. McEnroe is the fifth. Oh. He's McEnroe been very solid on his serve. Let's see what happens here. McEnroe number eight in the world, Fitzgerald number 41 in the world. Game McEnroe. Double fault, game to McEnroe. McEnroe with the break is up three games to two in the third, a set apiece. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Wimbledon. Dick Hanberg with Bud Collins, Joanne Russell, Stan Smith, and Charlie Jones. Gail Gardner also with us. Uh, we have time for some key interviews. You see McEnroe up a break in the third. They've split the first two. That's over on court one. Let's go out to court 14. Tim Mayotte's up a break in the third now as he's just two games away from eliminating Michael Chang. Chang, the winner in Paris, the youngest ever at 17 to win a Grand Slam title, has won 12 in a row. Perhaps his 13th is unlucky against Mayotte, who has always been tough at Wimbledon, where his record is 32 and 8. Now we're live at center court, where Mats Villander is in match game against Christo von Rensburg. Von Rensburg serving at 40-30. game for Fana Rensburg. And now Mats Villander, whose best ever Wimbledon showing is the quarterfinals, will serve to make it to the quarterfinals here in 1989. A man who won three major titles last year. He won the Australian, the French, and the U.S. Open. He called the U.S. Open his greatest victory ever, but uh, not Wimbledon. He's never been able to capture this treasured title. Villander then after becoming number one when beating Lendl at the uh, U.S. Open then fell on really hard times, bud. Gee, it was amazing how quickly and fast he fell, losing to Ramesh Krishnan in the second round of the Australian Open. After his first eight matches of 1989, he was three and five. He lost two Davis Cup matches to Horst Skoff and Alex Antonich of Austria, if you can believe that. He was stumbling, staggering, lost in the Italian Open to Jay Berger, the French Open to Andre Chesnikov. And this is really his best tournament of the year. He was a semifinalist to Monte Carlo, losing to the teenage Argentine Alberto Mancini. 15 love Yolander, who had not lost a set in his first three matches of this Wimbledon. Only Villander and Boris Becker can make that claim on the men's side. And then Villander lost to Von Rensburg 6-3 in the opening set today. But as you can see on the board behind him, 7-5 in the second and repeats that in the third. Now serving at 5-3, 15-love. Slowly but surely, Mott, when he arrived in Paris for the French Open, he said, I think I left my mind in Paris. I'll find it again. He didn't find it. So he said, the only thing can, that can save this season for me is Wimbledon. And here he's on the verge of reaching the quarterfinals, which he did once before last year, then lost to Milos Slavmecir. And a worthy opponent in Christo von Rensburg, who has used the lob especially as an offensive weapon in this match, winning many key points with lobs. Von Rensburg, South African, 27 years of age, and lives in Great Neck, New York coached by Peter Fishback of Great Neck from a very distinguished tennis family. Father Joe was on the circuit. Brother Michael had a sensational Forest Hills in 75. Four 
Well, two tough Four shots three. by Volander. He hit the service line, and then he punched that volley on the baseline to earn him two match points. Volander, who has seven Grand Slam titles, winning the Australian three times, the French three times, the youngest ever until uh, Chang came along to win in Paris and the U.S. Open last year. Connor yeah. Rensburg with his short backswing, punching strokes, has been bothersome throughout the match. It's really only been a couple of points separating these two. We saw Connor Rensburg two years ago winning his only professional championship, Lake Buena Vista, on NBC. He beat Jimmy Connors. Meanwhile, on court 14, it's match point as Tim Mayotte is one shot away from eliminating Michael Chang, and Max Villander has advanced to the quarterfinals. He'll meet either Fitzgerald or McEnroe in the next round. Now let's quickly go live out to court 14. Tim Mayotte and Michael Chang. Mayotte having a relatively easy time of it against Chang, who is serving 3-5 match point Mayotte. And a second ball. So the big guy from Springfield, Massachusetts and Stanford University, one of the most cerebral men on the pro circuit and one of the best liked. And they called him Gentleman Tim in the days when John McEnroe was at his uh, brashest. And Mayotte with a serve and volley grass lesson to Michael Chang. Tim Mayotte has advanced to the round of eight here at famed Wimbledon and will Mayotte meet by three Stefan Ed Bergnet. Looking down on center court, the shiny Monday afternoon of a beautiful England day. And for some, it will be pleasant, others not so. For Stefan Edberg, he's earned the chance to move on in defense of his Wimbledon championship as he defeated in straight sets. Almost Monstar, if you saw, Mayotte has won and will meet Edberg in what should be a terrific round on uh, Wednesday. McEnroe and Fitzgerald are battling on court one, and the winner gets Mats Villander, the number four seed. Let's go to that third set in Charlie Jones. Thank you, Dick. A set apiece. John Fitzgerald serving at 3-5 in the third. He is down a break. McEnroe holding his last two no. serves at love. And since the break, Fitzgerald held his last serve at love. They've really gone to a serving battle right now. It's been unusual. This match has not been a serving battle. Both having problems holding their serve. 15 over. But those are the type of returns that McEnroe's been hitting when he's been on. It's been spectacular right at Fitzgerald's feet or past him. Fitzgerald makes a great play here with a backhand. That slice, he'll stay low to McEnroe. He can't get the lob high enough. Fitzgerald was there. Oh, that's a shot. This is a forehand volley. Not much backspin. In fact, a little bit of topspin on the ball. Not what you teach the average club player. Thirteen. 
On his testament's back, I'm afraid. Nothing serious as of, as of yet. Forty thirty. Game Fitzgerald. Service ace. Game Fitzgerald. McEnroe leads in the third five games to four. One set apiece. We'll be back to Wimbledon 1989 in a moment. Court number one, Wimbledon 1989 men's fourth round match. The winner moving to the quarterfinals. He will meet Mox Bielander, who just won on the center court. One set apiece, McEnroe serving for the third set at 5-4. One break in this set. That was in the fifth game when he broke Fitzgerald. Service motion of John McEnroe, very slow and deliberate. A little half volley and a, a, a sloppy play by Fitzgerald. Well, it was. Fitzgerald made the good move to come in behind the return of serve. But McEnroe put it right back at his feet. McEnroe still has great hands, even if he's off balance. Fifteen four. The chair likes to hit the backhand down the line. And here he just meets that terrific first serve, and he hits a winner. During the changeover, McEnroe was complaining about he had run out of ice, and he'd asked for some a couple of changeovers back, and it had not gotten to him yet. for the wide one and somehow getting his racket on this forehand volley. Big, big point. It may be a long time before we see hands such as he has at Boy. this level. Quick but soft. <laughs> He's had problems serving that second serve to the ad court today. Three double faults on break points. Set point for McEnroe to go up two sets to one. It's wide. Ooh, close call. takes the third set six games to four and now goes up two sets to one and we're an hour and 49 minutes into this match on court number one 
And here's Chris Everett's score as she has moved through. And she is with Gail Gardner now. All right, Charlie, thank you very much. Chris, great to see you again. We've kind of been following your progress throughout the time that we've been here. At this point, I know earlier on you were not feeling terribly comfortable, not totally satisfied with the way that you've been playing. How do you feel now? Where do you think you are in terms of the larger perspective of things? Well, I played better today against Patty Fendick. She, um, she's real dangerous, you know. She's a serve and volleyer, and, and she's an aggressive player. And the first week, I sort of coasted along and didn't do anything spectacular. But I'm, I am hard on myself, and I'm a perfectionist. And on these grass courts, sometimes you expect a little bit too much. You'll get a bad bounce, or you'll get a wet court, or or whatever so I was happy today and now I'm in the quarterfinals so I can't complain you play Laura Galarsa and right. it's interesting but you you haven't played a seated player yet is that a good thing or a bad thing in terms of challenging you well I think it's been good for me because I've played about eight matches in the last three months you know and that's uh, that equals about two tournaments so I've been short of match play and I really needed to get my teeth into some matches and it would have been tough for me to, to play the big names or play the real dangerous players right from the start because I needed to build that confidence the first week so it's been good for me uh, Laura Galarsa she just beat Yana Novotna who um, is excellent on grass and I'm gonna have my hands full against her all right Chris Everett thank you very much continued su success to you let's go back to Dick Anberg all right Gail and Chris Everett with a chance to uh, bring more of her Great play and gallant heart to uh, another Wimbledon as she has advanced and we have more action and number one is on center court when we return. Welcome back to center court live and let's bring you up to date on other finals. Katarina Lindquist the 25 year old from Sweden has upset six seed Elena Sokova six four seven six and Lindquist will advance and meet Roz Fairbank Fairbank who now makes her home in San Diego beating Mary Jo Fernandez in three sets, six love in the third. So Fairbank and Lindquist will meet now in the quarterfinals. And Dan Goldie, the Stanford All-American, another big win for Goldie. He's the youngster that defeated Jimmy Connors a couple of rounds ago, 6'4", six, 6'4", four, six, four, six. Goldie chases Bobo Zivoljinovic, a Yugoslavian out of this championship. And back to court one live, John McEnroe. McEnroe up two sets to one, and McEnroe has broken, apparently. John Fitzgerald opened the fourth. Let's go back to Charlie Jones and Stan Smith. And McEnroe has taken command, Stan. Well, he's focused into the match now. He's looking like he's really eager. He's uh, throwing all these other things that he's been distracted by away, and he's playing tennis again. McEnroe taking the first set six games to three. He was up four games to love with a pair of service breaks. He got very sloppy on his serve. He was broken. Uh, he was broken twice. And then in the eighth game, a bit of a controversy as we take another look at McEnroe in action here. And he stalled and complained. And he broke the concentration of John Fitzgerald. Broke him and won the first set 6-3. Then Fitzgerald Time. completely dominated the second set with three service breaks. He won it six love. And then McEnroe with a service break took the third set six games to four. Seats he is up two please. sets to one and up one love with a service break here Seats in the fourth. Nicole, and of course the winner here move, moving will move through to the quarterfinals against Mats Vilander. Seats quickly please behind the court. As McEnroe moved to the baseline he was talking to himself. He said come on come on concentrate. His first serve has not been an awesome wet weapon today. He's only had one ace. He's moved it around pretty well, but he's double faulted on some crucial points. It's cost him. Next. First serve.
Tequila. McEnroe now in complete control of the match. Boy, it's amazing how it shifted. He started the match just like this, hitting shots right and left at will. And all of a sudden, he's really shifted into a different gear than he was the last two sets. 30 love. And up a break. One love in the fourth. Hello. 30-15. This Gerald is not out of it yet with that forehand. Oh. Oh. Backhand down the line, fortunately a fault. McEnroe. <laughs> A good doubles play by the Australian. Chipping and charging. 30 old. Watch how he moves into this. He'll take the next volley very close to the service line into the open course. John Fitzgerald, 28 years of age, born in Cummins, South Australia, living at Newport Beach, California. 6'1", 170 pounds, ranked 41st in the world, has won six Grand Prix titles. Well, that was the same play at the point previous. But you have to do it very well to beat Macron on this play because he's an outstanding doubles player as well. I was just thinking they would team up as a very formidable doubles team should they play together. Absolutely. Fitzgerald's won several Grand Slam events with other partners. They've never played together, though. He's won the Australian, the U.S., and the French Open. Yeah, Double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McEnroe leads by two games And to game to McEnroe. John leaves two games to love. We're in the fourth set. And this will give you an idea, if you have not been to Wimbledon, where we are located at court number one. We're just next door to center court, one of the uh, show courts. Court two is also a show court, which is just a walkway away. And outside court 13, and then you saw court 14, where Michael Chang lost to Mayotte earlier today, the other show court. 15 love. And now Fitzgerald, 15 love is serving at love two in the fourth, and McEnroe is up two sets to one. This court number one is generally the fastest court on the grounds, but you would not have known that today from the serving statistics of these fellows. They're not serving many aces. title at center court. Did you win your 35 and over title on court number one? Because I want to ask you about the idiosyncrasies of this court. Yes, I did. I played on this court many times, but the men's 35 and over title was played on court number one. What about this court besides being very quick? Well, it's open, too, because the wind, if it is windy, will come in here and swirl around. It's very long. difficult to negotiate uh, a good tennis match in a windy condition here at Wimbledon. Anything else the players think about coming into this court? Well, just the fact that it is very fast. Uh, it's open on one side. And, of course, the sun can be a problem with the players as well in this court. It's good. We'll see the magic of Mac here. A tremendous... Half volley by Fitzgerald, almost perfect, but Mack just lazily drifts it over Fitzgerald's head. All I can do is say, good shot. 
And a well-hidden shot, too. He waited to the last moment. It's all in the hands. Dan Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald holds. McEnroe leads 2-1 in the fourth. We'll be back. Two sets to one. Set, John McEnroe serving. He's up a break at 2-1, and he leads two sets to one over the Australian John Fitzgerald. Love 15. Only the second ace for John McEnroe today. That's quite amazing after playing for about two hours on a very fast court here at Wimbledon. It's not a good sign for matches to come, but you never know what another day might bring. McEnroe also with nine double faults in the first two sets. He has not double faulted since the end of the second set. Brilliant return. 15, 13. John Fitzgerald has won several titles, Grand Slam titles, with Andrews Jarrett from Sweden. And he plays the deuce side. And this is his return that he hits from his doubles position. Perfect. We mentioned that John Fitzgerald had won 16 career Grand Prix double titles. John McEnroe, the premier doubles player in the world, won 72. That includes four Wimbledon's, three U.S. Open, and seven consecutive Masters. Well, Charlie, I've always said that uh, John McEnroe is one of the great singles players of all time, but he's been the best doubles player I've ever seen. And there is the 10th double fault of McEnroe. 1540, he's in, he is in trouble on his serve as Fitzgerald please. a double break point. Now, wouldn't you know it as soon as you mentioned that he hasn't mm -hmm. double faulted since the first second set? Did he do it there? Thirteen, fourteen. <coughs> Still break point. That left-hander has a great edge here. He can try to slide that ball out and take some pace off the serve when he's serving to the ad court. This court here and slide it wide to Fitzgerald's backhand. That was a brilliant serve down the middle. And we're due. Well, he didn't take my advice, but he hits that serve down the middle well. Jams the right-hander. And a good guess by Fitzgerald, but he couldn't make the play. Forehand like this one, but McEnroe this time is on top of it. Flashes a genius continue for McEnroe. Look this move here. He pushes off to the backhand and drops it over. And he has the advantage. Game McEnroe. And the service ace game to McEnroe. 
He leads three games to one. That is only his third he ace of the match. Three games to one. And he is up a service break over John Fitzgerald. He will now serve at 1-3 in the fourth. And McEnroe leading two sets to one. McEnroe has said before this tournament that if he can get to the second week of the tournament, he feels his chances are pretty good to win it. Ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Thank you. today and he just lays the racket back slightly gets it in the way of the ball and it's a perfect return and it looks so easy and yet it is so difficult all in the hands well the great athletes make their sport look easy you can tell from the shadow that at the far end of the court John Fitzgerald the right hander serves with his son to his back love 30 McEnroe has that same serving advantage at the near end of the court. It's Love 30. McEnroe has also said that his intensity level is not as high as it used to be. And it's wavered in and out this match. Fitzgerald at Love 30. He cannot afford to let this game get away. And now I'll have a second serve. McEnroe has picked up his level of play. Fitzgerald cannot afford a second break. Oh, this is the same return off of the forehand side, but he plays this one deep. Well, so again, he just lays the racket back. Goes right towards his target with his follow through. A great thing for a youngster to look at when they're trying to play the game. Prepare early and follow through towards the target. And McEnroe. Triple break point. Fitzgerald serving at love 40. And he is down 3 1. <laughs> 15 40. Double break point. 15 40. Fitzgerald's ranked number 41 in the world, and he's gotten that high because he's been a good. Tough player in the crunch. Game McEnroe. Game to McEnroe. He breaks Fitzgerald for the second time in the fourth set. McEnroe is up 4 1 in the fourth. To one, four set and by two sets to one. Welcome back to court number one, our continuing live coverage of Wimbledon 1989, McEnroe at 15 love. Up 4-1 in the fourth, and two games to one over, or two sets to one over Fitzgerald. And now at 15 all, in this the sixth all. game of the fourth set. McEnroe started like a house on fire the first set, winning the first four games. And it looks like he might end up playing quite as well as he was then. A high volley. We talked about it earlier in this match. The high volley, the high volley can be a tough volley for you, but still one that you have to control. You have to concentrate very hard. It looks like such an easy shot and even the best players make this mistake, but you have to keep moving your feet and make sure you don't get sloppy on it. A strength volley is controlled by the wrist and the arm because your body in reality is out of it. Some movement or some noise. McEnroe steps away. Lady is 
about six feet inside of the line. And she is, uh, the reason is she wants to look past the receiver. Uh, otherwise, if she was right behind the line, she would be blocked. That's what McEnroe was complaining about. 1540. Meanwhile, he's got Brown in 1540. And Fitzgerald has a pair of five feet of breakers. Well, Fitzgerald, he's hit that backhand down the line several times today. It's his best shot. There was long. Fitzgerald stands quite far behind the baseline. And then as the service hit, he moves in and tries to cut off the angle. to Fitzgerald as he has one of the breaks back. McEnroe leads four games to two in this fourth set. Now, if you were with us just a little earlier in the telecast and you, we, from the high shot, you saw how close we are to center court. In fact, we're just adjacent to it. And the crowd noise will spill over from center court to court one, as you hear in the background. And it also, the noise from here will spill over to center court. Sometimes it can be a little disconcerting when you hear that crowd and you wonder exactly what's happening over there. And what's happening here is that Fitzgerald has one of the breaks back. He's serving at 2-4. 15 low. Also, Charlie, the fans are very close and at the same level as the players on this court number one. And it's distracting. Either way, it was close. The lines person, this time, she had moved right on the line. Forty love. McEnroe really has to guard himself from letting it go out of control, letting his temper get out of control at this point in time. Welcome back. Uh, Charlie alluded to the noise from center court. The cheer was for Monica Selich, the 15-year-old, when she finally took a game from Steffi Graf. And it's Graf serving 2-1 in the second, a six-love winner in the first. So she seems on her way into the quarters and would meet uh, the woman who beat her, the 17-year-old Spaniard, Sanchez Vicario, in the quarterfinals. Vicario over Lori McNeil. Chris Everett will meet Laura Galarza, the longest shot on the board in the quarterfinals. Katerina Lindquist, an upset of Sokova today, takes on Roz Fairbank. Remember, Fairbank was the one who beat the number three seed, Gabriela Sabatini. And Gretchen Majors of the U.S., she and her husband live on a boat in San Diego. We'll meet the number two seed, Martina Navratilova. And John McEnroe, let's see the latest from him over on court one. Here in the eighth game of the fourth set with McEnroe up two sets to one, he leads 4-3 and 15 love on his serve. Oh, and he has the eight. This fourth. The aces have been few and far between. If he wins this match, he plays Mats Villander. He's going to have to serve better. 
coupled with Ken double fault. A little bit of an advantage serving at this end as the sun is to his back for the left hander. And as Dan mentioned earlier, the sun can be a problem here. It'll sit down a little low right over the uh, the stands on the right side from the near end of the court or as we look at it through our television cameras. Oh, oh. the hands at work. <laughs> Where the racket doesn't work. Watch his positioning of John McElroy. He doesn't move his feet or his body too much for this volley, but look at the left hand. And he doesn't have all that great positioning, but the balance and the hands there are there. 40 love. and his 11th double fall. He's double followed most of the time long. That one was, of course, into the net. He's got to get some rhythm on that serve. I think he's a little too slow on his backswing. A little too deliberate right now. Game McEnroe. Game to McEnroe. He leads five games to three in the fourth and two sets to one. McEnroe leads by five games to three. McEnroe has said that he's going to take one match at a time here. He's not committing to winning this tournament, but he wants it badly, and he feels that if he can just get by five games. match here, he's going to start playing better. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And his level of play has improved throughout Wimbledon. Thank you. And we're beginning to run out of our allotted amount of time for our live coverage on this Monday. We'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. 15 long. Now, I have been informed that we are going to stay live until the end of this set. So we can conclude the McEnroe-Fitzgerald saga through four sets. A cripple, and he doesn't put it away. Oh. And McEnroe has it back. Oh. How about that? Well, three times during this match, the Cheryl has gone right at McEnroe instead of the open court. I think he's a little annoyed at him. This time, it's going to cost him because McEnroe puts his hands on every shot. Quiet, please. 15 off. Fitzgerald serving at 3 5. McEnroe has been broken once in this set. Fitzgerald twice. He hit it so well. Good lob by Fitzgerald. 
40-15. It's very smart play by Fitzgerald. He threw that lob up nice and high. It allowed him to get back in position to try to retrieve an overhead. Which fortunately for him, he didn't get. Thank you. Thirty. His fifth. Had a bad toss. This year has had a bit of a problem this year with his toss. Well, he has, and it's getting tight out there. It's not easy to get the ball in the right place. Lost. From up 40 15, a double fall to 40 30, and now John Fitzgerald is a deuce, and the pendulum swings to the near court and John McEnroe. Well, he knows Fitzgerald's a little tight. The champion, or the ex champion, really wants to come back and finish the match right now. The man is never satisfied with his play. to four, two sets to one. New we'll be back in a moment. Making no leads by five feet. Now let's look at the men's brackets on this Monday from Wimbledon. Yvonne Lendl will play next on center court against Peter Lundgren, and the winner will take on Dan Goldie, uh, the American from Stanford. Boris Becker plays later against the American Aaron Krikstein. And just in, Paul Chamberlain, a long shot in this championship, has defeated Leif Shiras. 7 5 6 4 7 6. The McEnroe Fitzgerald winner takes on Mats Volander in the quarterfinals. And Tim Mayotte will meet the defending champion Stefan Edberg on Wednesday. Now let's go back to court one and Charlie Jones. And John McEnroe serving for the match. 15 left. A victory here by McEnroe, and he would meet. Mats Vilander in the quarterfinals. And he doesn't have to worry about his shorts now because Michael Chang has lost. An update on that story. <laughs> Good play by it is wide. players. Gerald tried to chip and charge play, but it was too difficult a volley to handle. As I mentioned, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, live Eastern time. We'll also be on tonight. Dick Enberg will host our weekly, our daily wrap-up show throughout this, the second week at 11.30. So be sure to join Dick at that time. And you'll finish all of the stories that we have started today that we haven't had a chance to conclude with play Four continues at Wimbledon. But McEnroe and Fitzgerald drawing to a close. It's 40 love. And it looks like McEnroe will finish where he started. And Very fine. Why, please. Thank you. McEnroe serving at 40 love. Thank you.
6-3, Love 6, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. And McEnroe, the number five seed, moves through to the quarterfinals as he continues each match to raise his level of play. That wraps up our coverage today. So long from Wimbledon, 1989.